Hi, I'm Jay, and today I'm going to explain how a Nortec slash Condair electrode style steam humidifier works. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the cover off of this. Now this happens to be a model RH, which is a small residential light commercial unit, but all of the electrode style units work the same. All right, now I'm going to talk about the various components inside this unit. So we have an incoming water line right here. This is the fill valve. What I have here are four different types of Nortec fill valves. So these two look the same, but the difference in them is the orifice size. So this one has a little yellow orifice. This one has kind of a seafoam green orifice. These are double fill valves. Technically, the way this works is one side is the fill valve, the other side is for used for drain tempering. Um, so this one has a gray orifice. This side has no orifice, so this is a side that is used for the drain tempering. This one has kind of a seafoam green orifice and a purplish looking orifice. The purpose of the different colored orifices is gallons per minute. So the computer that is within the humidifier knows how long it takes to actually fill the tank based on the orifice size in it, in this fill valve. And because it knows how long it's supposed to take to fill the tank, if it's taking extraordinarily long to fill the tank, it knows there's a problem with something, fill valve, stuck closed, drain valve stuck open, water turned off, and then it's able to kick out a error code. This is a drain valve. This uh, drain valve is in pretty much every single electrode style Nortec unit made. So the way this thing works is right now it's in the closed position. So the port right here is what the steam cylinder actually sits onto and plugs into. This port here goes down to a drain. The, presently, the, the port inside of here is closed from here to here, but it's open from here to here. And the reason for that is the fill cup, which would normally be right about here, when the drain, fill valve's open, water goes up to the fill cup, spills over, goes back down another hose, goes to here, and because this is open to this, that water then goes this way, goes up, fills the steam cylinder from the bottom up, and then eventually at some point the unit decides it wants to drain that steam cylinder. It will open, and what that does is opens this port to this port, which is the drain. So the water would then run down the drain. This is the fill cup. This is a typical fill cup assembly. It comes with hoses and everything. Now I've loosened up the top of this thing so we can kind of take a look inside of it. So inside of here you'll see it looks funny in there. So the way this works is water comes from the fill valve, goes up one of the tubes, spills over inside of here, goes down to a low spot, and then it goes down a tube into the drain valve. The water then goes backwards through the drain valve and rises up, fills up the steam cylinder. In the event that the steam cylinder water level gets up too high and it actually gets up above this point here, the water would then go backwards through an, this tube and then it would spill over and go into another tube, down it, and then out the drain. This is the steam cylinder or steam tank. There are five different series of tanks. There is the 100 series, 200 series, 300 series, 400 series, 600 series. The little 100 series tank is tr strictly in commercial units, the same with from here up, these are strictly in commercial style units. 
This 200 series tank is what is installed in an RH or residential type unit. Lots of people want to know what these cylinders look like on the inside. So we've taken a 202 steam cylinder. We have two of them here. This is what they look like originally. So you have on the top the two electrodes and this is the high water level sensor probe here. And um, of course the drain connection on the bottom. And we took one of them and we chopped it open. So on the inside, what you can see is there are two electrodes. They're here and they're basically made out of chicken wire, if you will. If this were a three phase steam cylinder, it would have either three of these electrodes or six of them. And you can, if you look very closely down inside here, you can see the high water level probe, which is a little piece of rod, stainless rod sticking down in here. The steam exits the steam cylinder and goes into the steam hose. This is the steam distributor. What I have here on the table are four different steam distributors. This one, purely residential, kind of goes in like this, and there's where your steam comes out. These are all installed generally. You place these inside the supply plenum. This one is a dinky little residential style unit. Steam line goes here, condensate line goes here, and this is where the steam comes out. Again, mounted on the supply plenum. These are the more commercial style steam distributors. So we have two different sizes, and essentially it's just you know, the length. They are available in lots of different lengths and also capacities. The larger capacity units would have a larger nipple here for the steam hose. Uh, these also have two condensate connect connections. You can have one come out the bottom or you can connect it to the side, whichever happens to work out better for your application. This is the condensate line coming from the steam distributor back to the unit. In lieu of a humidistat, we have just installed an on-off switch to make it easier to turn this unit on and off for display purposes. Right here on the table, I have some of the more common Nortec slash Condair controls. This one happens to be a duct-mounted high humidity limit switch. So this is typically set at somewhere around 80% and it opens on high humidity generally mounted in the supply plenum downstream from the steam distributor. This is the fancy new version of this. Duct mounted, but it's digital. This is a static pressure sensor. So this is generally mounted on the supply plenum and this little tube that goes from one of these connections uh, goes into a pitot tube generally that is shoved in the supply plenum and it senses pressure in the supply plenum and allows the humidifier to run only if there is pressure in the supply plenum. This here, this is a kit. These are available uh, in duct mount with this, wall mount only. Um, available in on-off style control or also modulating. So you can get this, like I said, just like this as a kit with this duct mounted device. You can buy just this piece here, which can be wall mounted. You, it's available in on-off or modulating. And uh, there's even one that basically looks like this but has control on it like this so that you can just shove this into the, into the uh, return air and set your humidity right on the face of it. This is the on off switch and also a drain switch and indicator lights to tell you what's going on with the unit. This is the motherboard for the unit. This is the drain cup. This is the drain line.
Okay, let's turn this unit on and see how it works. So we're going to turn it on. It's going to run through its test procedure. Okay, done. Now we're going to turn the emitostat up. All right, so in a second it will open the fill valve and start to fill this tank. I'm going to put an amp probe on here so that we can see what happens. Okay, it says it's 0.1 amp, that's off. It's really actually drawing, yeah, there you go, see it's zero, but it's because of the way it's hanging here, it's giving you kind of a little bit of a false reading, but that's okay. All right. Now I'm shining a flashlight on the side of this tank because it makes it a lot easier when you're working on these units to see the water level. If, if you know, especially with a nice new tank where the water is pretty clean looking in there. Uh, but now we can see the water level's about here. We're really still drawing nothing. Well, let's just see what happens here. As the water level rises, the amperage will go up. It will go up to the point where the algorithm inside this motherboard says, hey, I have enough water in me. So that's what it's really doing. There's no uh, float level sensor. There's none of that in these units. Uh, it does everything based on amperage. So when it gets to the proper amperage for 100% capacity, it will automatically turn this fill valve off. Now, generally speaking, with a brand new steam cylinder, that's gonna be close to about halfway up the tank, give or take. Somewhere in this range here is where it will be with a brand new tank. As the tanks age and calcium builds up on the electrodes, the water level will slowly get a little higher because the electrodes are covered with lime or scale deposits, so um, they're basically an insulator, so uh, they're not really touching the water. They're, they're not able to short out, so to speak. So it will automatically raise the water level, and then eventually that portion of the electrodes will get coated, and then it will raise the water level. And eventually, it will get up here towards the top, and at some point, this little sensor here, which is attached to a little rod that sticks down in the top of the tank just a bit. When the water reaches up and touches that, that is the point where it'll kick out an alarm and tell you it's time to replace the tank. So these steam cylinders or steam tanks, they are to be replaced a minimum of once a year. If you have really bad water with lots of minerals in it or, or and or your unit runs a lot you will have to replace your steam cylinder more often than once a year. All right, so we're at 2.6 amps and climbing. So it's still filling. Again, when this gets up to what it considers full load amps for the capacity that we have this thing set for, it will just close this valve and the amperage will stop rising. And it'll kind of float around a little bit as the water starts to boil. All right, let's see where the water level is. It is about here. It's kind of hard to see with the sticker on top here, but it is reached somewhere around here. And our amperage is at 11 points, right now it's 11.8. The stated full load amps on the entire unit is 12.7. So it is determined that it wants to be somewhere in this range here, 11.9, 11.8. So it's warming up and it will start to perk here in a minute. All right, our steam cylinder is now at full boil. I don't know if you can see what's going on here. The water level is about here. You can maybe see it boiling over in here. Okay, we are drawing 10.6, 10.7 amps at 120 volts. And the steam is coming up here. 
and going to the steam distributor. We pulled out our infrared camera and recorded this unit while it's operating. The blue is the coldest temperature on the screen. The white is the hottest. And as you can see, steam is being generated inside the steam cylinder and running up the steam hose over to the steam distributor. And you can see it adding steam now. Right now, normally this steam distributor would be installed in ductwork. This would be mounted to the supply plenum just above the furnace. Um, and this steam distributor would be inserted in the ductwork so that you'd be dumping steam directly into the airstream uh, in the supply plenum. And any condensate that happens to form inside of this tube before it gets out here as steam would then come back here through this line here, go through this trap, and then it back in the fill cup. Now, we've done it this way because it's convenient for us. If it's not convenient to run this condensate back to the humidifier, you can just run this after you've run it through a trap. You can run this to a drain. But it is, like I said, running at 100% capacity right now for the voltage that we have feeding this thing. And the steam is coming out of here at atmospheric pressure. It, it does uh, only, these units only generate steam at atmospheric pressure. They do not generate high pressure steam like some other types of units. Thanks for watching. For additional help or questions, feel free to contact us.